Around the World in 80 Days, Part 2. I have never been in these expensive train compartments, Mr. Fogg. Whether something is expensive or not is relative, Passapatoo. What you call expensive, I call a just an expense. That's true, but Monsieur, how can you be so calm and confident? Wasn't what happened in London was a bad omen? Passapatoo was talking about how they were stopped by Inspector Fix. After placing a bet to go around the world in 80 days, Mr. Fogg had to leave as soon as possible as half his wealth, his house, and his membership with the Reform Club was at stake. But as soon as Mr. Fogg, along with Passapatu, walked out of their homes, they were stopped by Inspector Fix. Not so soon, Mr. Fogg. I am here to arrest you. Arrest me for what? Hand it over. Um, whatever it is that you stole from the Royal Bank of England. So, something was stolen from the bank, and you don't even know what it is. I have asked them so many times, but supposedly it was a secret document. But doesn't matter, because Mr. Fogg has stolen it. And now that you are all leaving in such a hurry, I am sure Mr. Fogg is the thief. Hmm. Do you have an arrest warrant to arrest me, Inspector Fix? <laughs> um, um, I thought so. As Mr. Fogg left, Inspector Fix was in a real fix. He considered Mr. Fogg to be his arch nemesis, meaning that Mr. Fogg was his number one enemy. You want an arrest warrant, Fogg? Fine, I will get it. Monsieur. To be stopped like that at the beginning of our trip is a bad omen for sure. Don't be foolish, Passapatu. We are on an adventurous trip. There are no bad omens. I have it all planned. We take this train to Dover and cross the English Channel and then take the train to Paris. We are on time. Monsieur, we ought to be careful in Paris. They say the situation there isn't as peaceful at all. Nonsense. We just have to pass the place like any normal person. And off we would be to Egypt. Oh, cheer up, Passapatu. Adventure awaits us. Passapatu was right. Paris had just been through a major change and was in unrest. The air here is so grim, Passapatu. Monsieur, let us quickly go to the spot to take our steamer. We are on time, Passapatu. Don't worry. We will go straight... Oh, wait. What is that? Seems like some kind of a procession, Monsieur. Let's check it out. Um... Phileas Fogg was curious by nature. He fit right in and began to observe the crowd around. Passapatu wasn't far behind. Salut! Do you want to? Nous sommes. Uh, I do know a little bit of French, Passepartout. Watch me. Je suis ici pour gouverner. What? Quel? Le mec, cet homme dit qu'il est ici pour régner. Wait. What's happening? Where did you learn that, monsieur? Um, I suddenly cannot recollect. Ah, run! Mr. Fogg wasn't sure what he had just said, but he knew that he had just said something wrong. Mr. Fogg and Passapatu ran for their lives through the markets and busy streets. <laughs> Passapatu, what do we do? What are, what, what are we doing now, monsieur? Keep running! Just a few yards away, Mr. Fogg saw a sign. Th this way! As they entered the lane, they couldn't believe what they saw. It was an air balloon! Monsieur, is that safe? I have never traveled into one, so we will have to find out. Air balloons were not really the safe way to travel around, which is why they were rarely spotted. And Mr. Fogg was not just curious, but also a courageous man. M Monsieur! Hop in, Passepartout! It's either this or them! There wasn't really a choice. Passepartout hopped in, and Mr. Fogg cut the anchor rope, 
which was tied to the group to hold the balloon from flying away. The balloon waved dangerously in air as it picked up from the ground. Mr. Fogg and Passapatu were moving inside the carriage of the balloon. Ooh, whoa! Ah, I'm going to die! I'm going to die! The crowd, though, was left behind. Finally, the balloon stabilized. I don't understand. What did I say? Monsieur, is you see si vous voulez? Meaning, you say, I am here to rule. Oh, holy map. Where must I have learned that from? Phew. Could I saw this balloon on time? The wind is going in the right direction. Tell me, Passepartout, have you ever been to Italy? I want this man! He has stolen something very important from the Royal Bank of England, and my sources tell me that he will be here in a few hours! If that is the case, then nothing to worry about. We will detain him, meaning he will be in our custody. Ahem. Do you do have a warrant, signore? Yes! It is on the way! I came first to make sure he doesn't slip out of my hands this time! Um, signore, you will not be able to arrest him without a warrant. I know that! Why does everybody keep repeating the same thing? <sighs> Mr. Folk, how do you know we are going in the right direction? Because I see Italy. And there it was, Italy in its full glory. Passapetu was stunned to see the beauty of this place. He could smell the fresh dough. I am so hungry, monsieur. Mi dispiace molto. Oops, we are too close to the ground. Hmm, that's better. Mr. Fogg was ready for almost anything. But soon, something completely unexpected happened. Something doesn't feel right. The balance of the balloon is off. What? What do you mean off? How to turn it off? Monsieur, please turn the balance off. Quiet, Passepartout. Oh, some bird must have torn the fabric of the balloon. The thing is, that when the balloon came too close to the ground, a tiny cuckoo planted herself on top of the balloon. And as the balloon rose up in the air, the cuckoo flew away, leaving a tear in the fabric. The balloon began to swirl around. Ah! Hold on tight, Passepartout! I am trying! Everybody on the ground watched as the balloon swirled around itself. Oh Dio, I'm Bianca di Loro. I am going to be sick. Finally, the balloon landed on the Mongolia steamer itself. Ah, I can't see. I am blind. I am alive. I am alive. Oh, 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 oh. We did it. We are alive. Where is here? <laughs> Unbelievable! We are on the Mongolia! Is that a new country now? <laughs> no! No, Passepartout! It's THE steamer! This will take us to Bombay! Bombay! The malfunction of the balloon had somehow managed to make Mr. Fogg reach his destination, even after being chased by angry Frenchmen. Mr. Fogg was pleased with himself, as it was merely day three, and he had already covered Europe. I must write down my speech for when they elect me president of the Reform Club. But Mr. Fogg was unaware that among all the strange faces, on the other end of the steamer was one known person. I still don't have a warrant! What do I do? He will get away! Signore! You'll not be able to arrest him without a warrant. 
I will follow you to the end of the world if I have to, Fog! Saying that, Inspector Fix boarded the steamer to follow Mr. Fog. Next stop, India! <laughs>